In this video, we'll create a transparent drop-down menu using HTML and CSS. So let's take a look at the full screen version here before we look at the mobile version. So as we hover over the links here in the navigation menu, we'll find that we have this blue shade and it's still giving off a transparent effect. And then if we scroll down, we have some paragraph filler space um, to make it so this farm image creates a full screen landing for us. So let's take a look at the mobile version here. If we select the burger uh, three-tiered menu button on the right, we have our drop-down menu and then we can go down through the various links here. So let's take another quick look at the desktop version and size it down so we can see where it transforms into the mobile version. So if we get down to about 768 pixels here, we'll see that the navigation menu will change into the mobile version here with the drop down button. So let me just scale it back up and then I'll let you know what we need to get started. In the description of this video alongside the subscribe button, which if you haven't done so, please remember to subscribe, will be these transparent drop down menu starter files which you can download for free. So this includes index.html, style.css, and the background image. I'm going to be using Sublime Text as my free text editor, which you can get at sublimetext.com, and I'm going to be using Google Chrome as the web browser where we'll be viewing the uh, drop-down menu. So here we have the version from the starter files without the menu at the top. So as you can see, we already have the image and the uh, paragraph text laid out for us underneath it. So Let's go ahead and take a quick look at our starter files here. At the top of the document we have our title of the website and then the three classes that we're seeing are for the transparent background image and then obviously below we have the three blocks of paragraph text. Alright, so let's start with our first navigation tag. So we'll write nav role equals navigation and then we're also going to give this an ID and just say nav. Okay, and then I'll close out our nav tag. And then let's go back up. And what we're going to do is create an input class. All right, so input class equals trigger. And then type will be checkbox. And then we're going to create an ID and we're just going to call it main nav button with a capital N and capital B in button. So this will be for our burger or hamburger drop down menu button. It's going to be a checkbox which will later change into that hamburger menu link that we're seeing right here once we're in our style.css sheet. So now let's add our menu text off to the left hand side. So we're going to write label for main nav button again with the capital characters here on click and then in between the label tag we'll just write menu okay and then we can drop down and if we take a look at it here we'll have a little checkbox up here and then our menu text to the right of it. All right, so the next thing that we'll do is we're going to create the actual links here. So we'll have an unordered list and then list items within it with a link for each list item. So write UL, open and close for our unordered list, and then LI for our first list item, and then AHREF for our link. And I'll just do a hashtag because we don't want it to link anywhere for now. That'll just keep us on the same page. And then home for the first navigation link. All right, and then we have the about us link beneath that. And I'll just do the services link underneath here. And then gallery, so li ahref pound or hashtag gallery 
L I A and then this one is contact and then the last one that we'll do is going to be blog so L I A H R E F and then blog alright so now if we save it and refresh the page that we're working on here we have our six navigation menu links laid out okay so that's everything for the HTML most of this tutorial will be in style Dot CSS. So let's go ahead and move over to style.css. So we already have a little CSS laid out for us as well as a Google font at the top of the page. So we'll start beneath that. Um, the CSS that we already have is for the full screen background image. Okay, so starting with the nav div ID, we'll write hashtag nav and then we'll give it a padding of 20 pixels. And now if we refresh, now we have some space up there to the top left and the top right. And then we'll give it a position of relative. And then we'll use that Google font for our font family at the top of style.css, which is Aramo. And then our fallback font will be sans serif. And then we'll also want uppercase characters. So we'll write text transform uppercase okay so now if we refresh there we have our uppercase characters okay so now let's drop down to our unordered list so we'll get to that with hashtag nav ul open and close your brackets and our first style is display none but for now what we're gonna do is make this an invisible comment in CSS with the forward slash and the asterisk because we want to be able to see it as we're editing it for now. So later um, it will be display none because we only want it to display once we click the drop down navigation button. So then we'll give it a width of 100%, a list style of none to take away the black dots to the left of the links, then margin zero and padding zero. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have uh, our margin and padding taken away as well as the dots for the unordered list. So now let's drop down and style the links themselves. So we'll need to get to the A link, starting with nav ul li and then A. Okay, so now let's write display block padding 1m, which is the equivalent to about 16 pixels, and then background will do sort of a light to dark gray color. So there we have our, our padding. Now let's add the gray color. So this is going to be the hex value 323232. Three, two, three, two. And then we'll say color white or FFF for our links. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our white links. And then let's take away the underline. So text decoration none. And then we're going to create a border. So if we look at the original, we have a border to the right of each navigation link. So what we'll do is border right, one pixel solid, and then a light gray color. So 4C, 4C, 4C. So for now, it's going to be difficult to see it to the right here because we don't have any dark gray to the side of it. If we change it to 11 pixels, we'll be able to clearly see it. So there, there's the border right, and I'll just change it back to one pixel. Okay, so now let's drop down and let's create the hover style for when we hover over a navigation link. So nav ul lia hover with the colon in between a and hover, and then background, and the hex value is 2980b9, which will be for sort of a flat blue color. OK, 
Okay, so let's refresh. And there we have our flat blue. Okay, so now let's go back and let's make it transparent. So this is pretty simple. We'll just do opacity 0.8. All right, so then if we refresh, there we have our transparency for the whole menu. Okay, so moving on, what we wanna do is actually take away some of the border. So we don't want border on our last navigation link. To do that, we'll go with navuli colon last dash of dash type A. And then we'll just say border right none so there we have our border and we don't want it on the last one okay so border dash right none okay and then moving on the next thing that we'll do is let's get rid of the check mark or checkbox to the left of the menu text. So to do that, we'll write nav input dot trigger position absolute top negative 9,999 pixels and then the same for the left. So this is going to send our checkbox way off the page so we don't see it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we'll need to uh, style the checkbox or trigger so when we check it it's going to display blocked for us so nav input dot trigger colon checked tilde ul open and close and then display block and important okay so now let's drop down and the next thing that we'll do is we'll style the nav label so the label is going to be the menu text and then the burger off to the right hand side. Okay, so here we have label, our label tag. So we'll reference that with nav, label, open and close, position, relative, display, block. We'll give it a minimum height of 2 em or about 32 pixels so that's going to raise the bar a little bit or lower the navigation menu links and then we'll give it a padding of 0.45 m the same background color as the navigation links with the gray shade of 323232 and then we'll obviously want to make it transparent, similar to the links. So let's give it a font size of 1.1M. And then we'll give it a larger line height to cen center the, uh, the menu text there. So line height of 2M which is the same as the minimum height. Then we'll give it the color of white. And now if we refresh, there we have our menu text, and then we'll just make the background transparent. So opacity 0.8. Or point, let's see what it looks like. All right, let's stay with um, 0.8. Okay. So now let's style the uh, or add the burger menu off to the right hand side. So we'll, we'll reference that with nav label colon after. And then we'll say position absolute. We're going to push it off to the right. So right 0.8m and then top. 0.5m and then content and this is going to be backward slash 2261 and that's the reference for the uh, the character or 
font character for the little burger menu there and then we'll want to enlarge it so let's change the font size to 2.3 m which is I think a little bit less than 40 pixels or about that okay so there we have our menu bar and now what we can do is take away the comment characters here for display none and there we have our mobile version complete so now we can move over to our full width version All right so let's drop down and we'll create a little media query here so I'll drop down and say media and then in parentheses minimum or min width 48m which is the equivalent to 768 pixels so what we're saying is anything larger than 768 pixels apply these um, styles to it so let's go ahead and style the unordered list first so that rather than having it display none we're gonna have it display flex so nav ul display flex and then flex direction row okay so now if we take a look at it there we have the start of our desktop version okay so now let's dial the list items nav ul li and then position relative flex one and now there we have our list items filling up all the space there and then text align center All right, so now let's take away the nav label, the top bar here. So we'll reference that with nav label and then display none. Okay, so now if we refresh, there we have our desktop version complete. So to make it completely like the original, let's go ahead and just add a quick paragraph style. So we'll reference our paragraph with the letter P. We'll give it a padding all around of 2%. Let's change the font size to 170% and enlarge our line height to 180%. And then we'll just say text align justify to give it the newspaper feel of um, straight up and down edges. Okay. So there we have our complete transparent drop-down navigation menu okay so that does it for the tutorial I want to thank you for watching please remember to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial